Right. Um, uh, we don't have any uh, deputations uh, by appointment, so we come to presentation of petitions. And the first presentation uh, is from Councillor Galloway, who is presenting a petition regarding an extension of the opening hours for the Hallsville Pool for the 2019-2020 season. Kia ora koutou. It's my pleasure to present a petition of 431 submissions regarding an extension of the opening hours for the Hallsville Pool for the 2019-20 season. That's next summer. The petition summary and background. There is a demand for the Hallsville Pool to be open earlier in the day. The action petitioned for is the extension of the opening hours for the Hallsville Pool for the 2019 2020 season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The um, next item on the agenda is the. Oh, sorry. Um, would someone like to move that the that it be received? I'll let uh, Jimmy Chen uh, move that. Seconded by Phil Clearwater. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Uh, the next is um, Mark Watson and Jason Harvey um, to present um, uh, a petition in relation to proposed changes to uh, Cranford Street. Just just before you begin, I just just want to clarify a. Um, uh, a sequence of events. I think the, the first petition was originally received by the Papanui Innes Community Board. Um, I'm not, I don't sit on the community board, so I'm just updating for myself. Um, as the issue was um, pertinent to the work uh, of uh, Dr Shane Turner, the independent expert uh, who has been engaged to do the traffic management plan for the downstream effects. Um, the community board said that they would forward the petition to him, and I understand that they have, and the um, and the review team. So, um, on that basis, uh, um, we are happy to uh, hear from you. And I understand it's Mark Wilson. I've read out the wrong name. Sorry, yep. no, I've had I've had the wrong name written down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to clarify. When we presented the petition to the community board, we actually didn't request the petition be handed to the independent uh, traffic reviewer, assessor, whatever. We asked it to be uh, presented to council. Yeah, I know, but the thing is, is that there's a process yeah, that's going on. Yeah, we understand that. We understand that. Yeah, we understand. and and yeah, we understand that, now. Yeah, and we also have a kind of a, a general rule of thumb, which is mm. uh, you don't get two bites of the cherry which okay. is that you present at the community board level while it's at the community board, um, you don't it's get a pretty to big come cherry, back though. here. Yeah, pretty, pretty big cherry, this one. Um, OK, we'll start the time and go through our presentation. Thanks. Yeah. OK, uh, so thanks for the opportunity to speak today, uh, Madam Mayor and councillors, for listening. Uh, we're here to present our community's petition to the Christchurch City Council. A petition opposes the downstream effects management plan that you will be voting on today. The petition is titled Don't Funnel Traffic Through Our Communities. The petition states we are opposed to the proposed changes to Cranford Street and the surrounding area <clears throat> and demand other options are explored. Our petition now has over 2,500 supporters who are opposed to the road changes, opposed to funneling tens of thousands of more cars into our community, which is a significant amount more, the 2,500 is a significant amount more than the 400 submissions from the first round of consultation that the council received. Our petition started after a conversation between a few neighbours about the proposed uh, changes to Cranford Street and, and surrounding areas pamphlet were received in the mail. We had a community meeting on the 27th of May and we discussed our concerns amongst the community group and our response was to start a petition. We started the petition uh, with a paper-based petition which was taken door to door and left at local dairies, uh, the bakery and the supermarket. In addition, we also started an electronic petition through change.org. While we appreciate the difficult position the council are in and having to deal with the extra traffic that, that the CNC will bring into, on, onto Cranford Street, we encourage you to do the right thing by the community and listen to the residents most affected by this roading project. This road idea is a 50-year-old bad idea. It's past thinking, not future thinking, that and it's uh, future thinking is what this council needs to be able to 
do to meet its own emission and greenhouse reduction uh, requirements as outlined in the Christchurch Transport Strategic Plan. Think about long-term op term options, not short-term solutions. Instead of making roads that accommodate more cars, mostly from out of the district, which will just encourage more car dependency, uh, think sustainably and provide increased public transport, reduce traffic volumes, encourage more biking into and around the city, change the culture away from car dependency. Uh, so the Northern uh, Arterial idea has been in existence for many decades. Uh, four times it's been put to the community, four times the community have said no. Uh, I give the previous council credit for trying to thwart its latest reincarnation, but have to question seriously the process following. Why was it built? Why does it effectively dump thousands of cars on streets and roads that can't cope and never will? We haven't had any answers yet. At the start of all of this, the, the petition, I found a survey online. It was uh, commissioned for the Christchurch Northern Corridor, 2016. It reported over 75% of commuters from North Canterbury are single occupant drivers, and over 95% have one passenger or less in their cars. It seems that from that point onwards, the Northern Arterial and the Downstream, uh, down, downstream Effects Management Plan have been planned for the ease of these commuters, and very little thought has been given to the communities affected. Oh, and we will also be paying for it. Now, how can a project such as this one not have public transport at its core? A healthy, vibrant city focuses on reducing traffic volumes to facilitate uh, or to encourage different modes of transport, especially within the community. People bike when roads aren't dangerous or filled with cars. How many children will be able to cycle to school, in all honesty, along my road? Not many. From everything I've read and seen, the plan focuses on moving cars, not people. In this day and age, I think you must agree that's an outdated approach, and certainly not in line with any of the long-term strategic goals of the, pre of the present council. And it, it, Jason just referred to the Christchurch strategic plan. I mean, reshaping travel demand to reduce emission on and uh, um, reduce emissions and oil dependence. Uh, you know, and investing in green infrastructure. I can't see any of that sort of stuff aligning with the, the Northern Arterial, that's for sure. In August, the Papua New Guinea Community Board heard Christchurch Central MP Duncan Webb encourage the council to re-engage with the central government. He said there was a new government and new, new thinking in terms of public transport and tra traffic management. Has anyone reached out to the Minister of Transport? I'm, I'm sure you'll find a different attitude on the end of the line. Now back to the elephant in the room. We all realise the motorway is essentially here now. Fait accompli, we hear. Cranford, South, uh, Cranford Street, north of Innes Road, has already been heavily modified and re-engineered. The cars are coming, people shout from the rooftops. We only have 18 months until Carmageddon. The hysteria is clouding clear decisions being made on behalf of the community. We must implement measures to reduce the volume of traffic, not facilitate more. If Christchurch isn't ready for the traffic, don't open the motorway. You may feel you're in an unenviable position voting on a project that no one in Christchurch really wanted, but was forced upon us. Well, I would love to be in your position to make the right choice for the generations of tomorrow. I am sure I don't need to remind you, you represent your respective communities and Christchurch citizens as a whole. Some of those citizens are here today. And we also have obviously apologies of not being able to attend. And some of those people have signed this, position, uh, this petition that we're going to present to you. Please listen to us now. We want you to vote against this project Today, you can do that by not, re not receiving the review and requesting it go back to the community with a much larger scope, with people at its core, not cars. Thank you. Thank you. So if we can present the petition to uh, the Mayor, I'll give it to you. Yep. Mm -hmm.
No, that's the no, end of the time right. for that. Um, you can obviously contact us. Yep, thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to um, get with a motion which is to receive the petition. Um, and uh, it's a paper that we're dealing with today. So um, and refer it to the Papanui Inners and Linwood Central Heathcote Community Boards. Oh, I was just wondering why it goes to the community boards, given this is a metropolitan project, and this is in front of council. I think it would be a mistake not to refer the detail of the petition to the community boards, given that they are they're the next port of call in terms of the independent uh, report. But it's, I would have thought it should go to the ITI Committee of Council, and then whatever happens goes back well, through I'll take, the I'll take boards, a lead from the main know. community board. What's I think it needs to come back to the community board before it goes forward again. Like yeah. We've received it here at council, so we're very aware of it. Yeah. Um, but if this is received, it'll go out for engagement with the community. Yeah. Um, and that will be there for feedback to the community board before it comes back to council. Excellent. Okay. So then we will include that petition in our um, yeah. eventual report back to council. Um, but normally, petition does sit with council. So I, yeah, I, I know. Well, it sits with council, but we need to be. It needs to be referred to us so the community board is aware of it, as well. But I think the, the group's intention was to bring it to council and it, for it to stay at council. Is my view yeah, right. because that's, they feel that's, that's they correct. Feel but there's six, there's six members on the community it? board, and there's four of them not here today. Yeah. So the Look, community board members need to be aware of this petition as well. Yeah, I, I do think so because I mean it was you know a, a pretty powerful statement on behalf of a number of people and a significant number of people who signed the petition. Doesn't mean that we're not taking it into account. Mm. It means that um, the community board gets to reflect on it as well. So I, I just think that that's uh, on the other side of there. <laughs> this is um, a community who's they're wanting to really feel listened to and they're wanting to feel that their views are more than just feeding into this ultimate decision and they want the petition to stay here and I think it's really an important signal to them to keep the petition with council. I'm hearing that from them and I know that what you're saying Mike but I know the community board is well aware of the petition so I would support this petition staying here. But, but the point is, is that um, it will stay here anyway. So we receive the, the petition and then we also refer it uh, to the Papanui Inners and Linwood Central Heathcote Community Board so that they can consider it as well. I mean, it's two, two different things um, because you don't know what the decision of the council is going to be today in response to what we've heard. And so we're going to make a decision today um, uh, to either receive or not receive the report. Um, and, and, and then but regardless, it's worthwhile referring this to the two community boards as well. So I'll move that if it's a, an, an issue. Do I have a seconder for that position? Mike, is there any discussion? Um, can I just get clarification? Like it, it would seem to me, to be straightforward, that since the people have come here, that in fact we, we receive the petition and it also goes for discussion to the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. So maybe we just need to add an additional wording after referring to the Papanu Innes and Limwood Central Heathcote Community Boards for a report back to Council so that it's clear that it will come back. Generally when we receive a petition we, re we get a report to a committee as a result. It is in relation in to a matter we are debating today. So there is no point getting a report back on the recommendation for today Today's meeting, we will make a decision on the paper when we get to that paper. That the issue that in relation to it being referred to the Papanui and us, the two community boards, is so that they are aware. You know, we don't have all of the members of the two community boards present in the room right now, and it would be worthwhile that they got, um, you know, the the detailed uh, presentation that They've we got from today. Voted on this report. 
That's right. That's right. But it's ultimately our decision. So, all right. So um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. 